Hello there and welcome to the value of everything. So I want to get back into doing a little bit more of a thought experiment um, based on current events. So I'm going to try and get one of these out as much as I can. Uh, one of the, what shall we say, more interesting things which has come out recently, which does invoke on citizens' freedoms is Google's treatment with an employee when they questioned how certain, what shall we say, genetic components has a uh, an effect on the selection process. But I don't think that really explains it. I'll go into a bit more detail. So recently, uh, Google came out with an announcement and the, the cruts of everything came into this line where it says to suggest a group of colleagues who have traits that make them less biologically suited to work is an offence and is not okay. So that is really a, a kind of a straw man argument and it takes things a bit out of, con a bit out of context. So I guess a good response in this respect would be to say that there are genetic traits and there is being in the right place at the right time and there is human desire and uh, predetermination and randomness both play a part. Now breaking predetermined factors will occur as those with who are biological minorities are employed as a result of that and uh, even if they are less capable or less biologically capable it proves something quite complementary they have traits which um, are like heightened drive and determination which arguably is ethically better so it's really something that should be promoted in organizations which want to look good in the public eye or in the public scrutiny. So in this respect, I think uh, where they've come at this, at this angle of saying, oh, you, um, you've suggested that these traits are not suited for work, that's wrong. Well, they're not, not really looking at the other side of the argument where these people are actually there and there's a good reason why they're there. So I'm um, sorry, Google, your straw man argument has failed. Um, but there is actually interesting information about this, and it's one of the, the University College um, of London professor, Chai Jung Tse, apologies for my explanation there, says that there is actually a, a thing where people do go off of natural talent more so than uh, just like raw determination. So I guess it is something that could be addressed with an employer, how they perceive, perceive things. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to see. Um, when, when you look at the perspective of an employer, there's, um, th there's obviously the competence tests and uh, employment quotas, which um, is, is a very logical kind of uh, system of selecting people. But then there is also uh, employer's intuition or prejudice, you could say, which um, could um, see, say, for example, a shoelace untied. So that would be very bad for somebody who requires attention to detail in their role. Um, but then also there could be invalid prejudice where you could see an Asian isn't so, sorry, an Asian is always deemed as very smart in their role, so you should always opt for employing them. So there, there is that predetermination, uh, sorry, there is that uh, prejudice which is applied, but really I would say it was an, an internal matter and Google should have probably looked at that case and said, hmm, Maybe there's something um, it to this and we should look at how our employer's um, intuition is looked at when selecting people so that, um, say, these people have got human traits or human desires which are very strong um, and maybe not have the biological components, but we are still selecting on those people. So um, the I guess the minorities are um, not getting casted away and you're going for 
natural talent beats everything or beats experience. <clears throat> now, obviously this isn't necessarily all about HR and a HR selection, um, but yeah, I guess one of the things about um, HR departments is that they are not really much to do with human relations, but more to do with um, systematic, uh, being a systematic de department, um, which is obviously trying to avoid litigation um, for its treatment of its staff. So there's very little humanity in the way that they perform their actions. They're very sort of, if you ever see somebody in HR, they're like, um, it's all quite fakery and overperformance a lot of the time. But obviously they're just somebody who's trapped in the cogs of a corporation. Um, but when we look at uh, Google and it's, it's this kind of a, a censorship which is occurring here and that's probably where a lot of the issues are rising and that's why a lot of the flares are going up about well, why should you be um, going against this side or this employee and obviously it comes it comes into a question where it, where there is uh, YouTube channels which are being funded by advertisements advertisements and they're getting uh, cut back it's uh, it, well, it's eroding the ability for people to perform. Now, uh, as things are getting more and more automated and in a lot of ways they're becoming more corporatized and they're becoming a bit more corporatized and there is less so of um, an ability for many people to, say, create something that's uh, very industrious and more so in produces things in the human space like ideas or art and I guess what's the more most important part of art and ideas is uh, really the political activism side of things the really thing that that passes a message to say that your life can be massively improved if the uh, ideas flourished and people were working in this direction rather say than against each other now, um, I guess th there's another argument from the statist argument uh, perspective as well as to say, well, um, Google has become a little bit of a, no a monopoly on the market when it comes to uploading videos and getting monetized backwards from that. And uh, I remember there was like an antitrust uh, thing within with Europe with Microsoft where he would. Uh, let's say package its web browser and other things if you install Windows. So they're potentially, if any, you think you've got Donald Trump there, who's probably the biggest, say, proponent of the alternative media or the right side, who could say, look, um, this is wrong. You should be not monopolizing and saying who should get paid and who shouldn't get paid. This is a monopoly on the market. We should break you up and maybe some videos are like well maybe the youtube of cat videos is one and then there's a youtube of political activism and in that youtube channel or you sorry youtube into uh, offshoot business then there's certain ad ad advertisements or advertising companies which would want to put their media out there so if you can think of it which um, kind of adverts would go with um, political ad act activism and just political ideas or theories. It would be more so your computer games and your movies. All the, the, the art would um, be some kind of loopback feed. And out of all the adverts that you see on, online, you really would prefer that kind of stuff in comparison to the uh i don't know the bullshit crap that you get from your standard television so more for it if there is a single channel uh youtube business based upon political activism i think that would probably even get more traction than the other ones um you could say that there's the argument of oh you're going to supply the terrorists the isis supporters but um you can really be clever. You don't have to lead everything to an algorithm. You can say, well, um, I'm an advertiser. Really, I just want to get out to um, the far right or the far left. Um, I would really like to... Uh, the left are really good um, at, I don't know, th thinking about new ideas. So I want to put my movie out to them. Um, the, the right side, they've always got a bit of money. So I'd like to sell 
um, this side over to them. I was about to say insurance, so that go against what I said, but even so, it's like, um, it's still advertising dollars, and um, I'm sure there's a market for everyone. Now, even say, there could be an advertiser that wants to go out to, like, um, who sells Muslim, whatever, uh, halal meat or anything, that wants to go out to them, so... Um, yeah, maybe the stuff is distasteful, but, um, you, you, obviously there, there, there are grounds in terms of how far things should go, but, uh, freedom of speech prevails more than anything else, and, uh, again, as everything gets automated, there's less of a chance to make revenue out of a lot of things, and there's an, only a little bit of chance of making revenue out of... Um, art and performance and if you crush that and the main thing of art and performance is the spreading of ideas if that's getting crushed uh, what are we going to do make cat videos for the rest out of our lives this um is a bit crazy but um another thing that i was thinking about recently is about audley huxley um Audley huxley i believe and uh uh george orwell 1984 now this is more of a 1984 um, move because it is draconian it is a forceful move to change and uh, demonetize people but on the other side it is a very PC like oh yeah let's all go along with it so there is that brave new world which is also going against 1984 there's like this peaceful oh we're gonna do it for the good of everyone the good of uh, people's uh well-being and uh, respectful of diversity and then on the other side you've got the forceful side the 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 uh, the legal side the legal hr team which is very forceful and uh throws uh people out of the uh, well throws uh, employees out onto the streets because they do not or well, they share ideas which don't uh complement theirs um, so yeah, they're, they're just a few of the ideas where I was just thought thinking about at the same time. Um, and, uh, I guess an, an, another like, significant point as well is that we all know that there's, um, a significant financial crisis now around the corner and, uh, you really want to demonetize them as quickly as possible because of, obviously, um, you do not want them to have this strong, powerful voice when um, things crash and people are looking for new ideas, how to change the world. You want to silence them. So there is this quiet, um, peaceful way without anybody really knowing, just like for, for the individual, they get demonetized, they walk away, they're like, oh, okay, that's the end of my life. Um, but look into uh, stacking the shelves, but um, for everybody else, it doesn't seem like anything's happening. So there is the perspective of the person who's uh, uh, just uh, I get the consumer of, uh, say, YouTube. They're going, oh, okay, I'm seeing a little less of this. Maybe it's not as popular. Maybe the activism, everyone's calmed down now and it isn't quite as, as popular as what it is. But that does also send a message to people. So... Um, yeah, I'm going to leave you with those thoughts. Um, uh, well, another thing from Google is that when you uh, make a statement and it's just purely a statement, remember that's no dialogue. There's no uh, representative of Google that will sit down and have a honest discussion about what was going on. It's just this big corporation with many uh, far walls and legal departments. They're just too scared to ever have somebody who actually owns a company and talks from what they believe at least in some regard Facebook is better for that with um, Zuckerberg because at least he can actually argue and debate but when you're looking at Google it's just a you've got a statement and close and then uh, pay for your legal team afterwards and hope for the best but really um, it'll be so much nicer to get somebody uh, like the Google maestro, the person, the Google lawyer or anybody who can actually argue and debate their sides. Maybe there is better arguments out there than Google's defense of diversity. I understand, uh, yeah, I guess my feelings are something that exists, but there is a prevalence of facts and truth and information which should counterweigh it as as much as as bad as i feel um the truth is very relevant um or we cannot really make strives to improve things so 
Um, yeah, let me know how uh, this one goes. And uh, I'm, I'm actually not editing this one as well because it just takes thousands of hours. And I thought if I can just throw them out as, uh, as often as possible, maybe that's a bit better than just uh, me sitting there trying to make a very succinct argument. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time and uh, I'll be back again for more.